So hello and welcome to today's episode of Bully Mysteries. Today we're going to be focusing on a rather overlooked mystery regarding the hole, aka the school's basement, which is about to date one of the most unusual areas inside Bully for a variety of different reasons. And one of the very first things that makes the basement stand out is the geography of the interior compared to the exterior. And this is something I did point out during my Beta Borth Academy video which I made some years ago where I said this. But anyway, if we go inside the basement and look to our right, we have this massive shutter which is... Well, which just appears out of nowhere. Now I'm really confused as to why this is here. I mean, when you look on the exterior, there's only, you know, some stairs. But here there seems to be stairs and, like, a little garage, kind of. I mean, these shutters aren't even seen on the exterior. Hmm, not as good as my content nowadays. Anyway, that's the first major hint that the basement isn't what it seems. And we do know that, going off concept artwork and the official beta model of the academy, we can see the school was going to be a bit more flat, I guess you could say. So my theory of this possibly being connected to the parking lot doesn't seem that far-fetched. Now, in the very same room, if we turn our attention behind us, we can see a bed. And this bed is never ever commented on by Jimmy nor Gary during the only mission where the basement is actually used. Nobody ever uses it and it's not usable by Jimmy either. It looks like it's a very light addition and nothing was really added in time. Aside from just the radio which we do see in Jimmy's safe house. Now the further you explore the basement it just becomes completely silent except for ambience and gives people a really eerie feeling like you're not supposed to be down here at all. Now there is actually a reason for this, and it's supposedly to do with the school's janitor, Mr. Luntz, who himself has a lot of cut content surrounding him. Anyway, during development, it's said that after 7pm, Mr. Luntz would pack up shop and go and reside in the basement for the rest of the evening, which is why he's nowhere to be found after the school closes. But that's not all. Now I believe, but I have no proof, but believe there was going to be some secret Rockstar had for him. Now, in the body community, people do have a theory that Mr. Luntz is hiding something, because of his incredibly off-putting dialogue, mentioning how Dr. Kravelsnitch doesn't know what he's up to, and he's also mentioning how people should be kept in chains in the basement. Which is backed further by a film being shown at Bald Fail Cinema, titled Creepy Janitor, which, oddly enough, has his face. Now, sadly, nothing ever really comes of this. But one of the pieces of cut content surrounding Mr. Lunds I do have is his concept art. Yeah, imagine just sneaking into the basement during your first playthrough of the game and encountering that at midnight. Now one of the reasons this was most likely cut was due to either not enough time to finish his script, or maybe he was removed because Jimmy could just come down here and beat up Mr. Luntz without any consequences whatsoever. Which is also the same reason why the little kids were removed from the boys dorm. Now, some people do believe that the basement was going to be one of Jimmy's safe phases because of the addition of the bed and the radio. Which actually does share some similarities with the Jock Club house and the Greaser safe house, as most safe houses, excluding the dorm and the nerd store, do have this bed and a muted soundtrack in favour of a radio which can be destroyed and then you just get eerie silence. But looking at that theory, it does seem likely but also unlikely as Buddy is Rockstar's smallest map and having this be a safe house when it's less than 40 seconds away from two other safe houses, these be the boys dorm and the drop club house, it seems like such a waste of time just to add another safe house here. So now let's cover the biggest weird area, which is the hold itself which is best known for being Russell Northrop's boss fight arena, and we can possibly find out some more information about this. Now what makes the basement stand out is, it's the only boss arena, excluding the football field and the boxing gym, which itself is unlocked after chapter 5. The room where you fight derby I mean, not, not the gym. You know what I mean. Anyway, aside from the football field and the boxing gym's trophy room, it can be accessed at any time. Other areas in boss fights, such as the junkyard in Johnny Vincent's boss fight, or the observatory where you fight Ernest, or the power plant where you fight Edgar, they're only used for one mission and one mission only, and then you're not allowed to free roam them ever again. Unless you mod your way in, of course. But this one, you seemingly can, and there's nobody ever down here at any point. The only NPCs that do come down here are ones that Jimmy brings himself by hiring them, and then taking them to the hole himself. But let's take a look at the Russell Northrop boss fight, because in the files for Russell's fight there's a line of code for a bookmaker, who would apparently spawn at the ringside table and Jimmy could interact with them, apparently. But in the mission itself, no bookmaker is ever seen at the ringside table. In fact, if you actually do replay the mission and complete it, Russell's boss fight is the only one that doesn't actually softlock your game. Now, of course, as you know, Bully doesn't have a mission replayability feature that was first introduced in, um, I think it was Grand Theft Auto The Ballad Gay Tony. Until then, if you wanted to replay any Rockstar mission, you just have to make a save and just play it back from there. Anyway, 
Of course, with mods, you can replay any mission you want, and boss fights, due to the way the game works, usually after a boss fight, the season changes, and you know, it kicks off a new chapter, Bully tends to softlock after any boss fight. For example, if you use a super mod and you fight, say, um, Darby Harrington, and it's chapter 4, the game will just endlessly load afterwards. But, if you decide to redo Russell's boss fight, you can actually beat that mission no problem whatsoever, and Jimmy will spawn standing right next to the ringside table. Now this could potentially imply that there was going to be an alternate mission cutscene rather than Jimmy just getting frustrated at Gary. Also, regarding the bookmaker, it makes no sense for one to appear in the mission, as bookmakers, if you don't know, are people who basically take bets, and Jimmy is being baited into the hole himself, so I doubt Jimmy would have time to wager $10 on himself to win. But there is a very similar feature in the carnival, where Jimmy can bet on two midgets fighting. Maybe the hole did house something similar, where Jimmy could just come down here and bet on two random characters to fight, and, you know, bet on the winner. Or maybe this was something Jimmy himself could join in, but all of this was scrapped either due to limitations or controversy. Now if, and I do say if, a fight club was planned for the hole and was scrapped, then we can say that this feature was eventually brought into Grand Theft Auto The Bad of the Gay Tony. As the underground fighting club does make an appearance in the first few missions of the game, and can also be a side activity, after being cut from Grand Theft Auto The Lost and Damned 2, which in my opinion, it'd be a bigger fit for, you know, The Lost and Damned, but anyway. Regarding this theory, some characters do actually have dialogue reference in the hole. For example, Christy Martin can be heard saying, did you hear there's fresh blood on the floor of the hole, and there's rumours that Dr. Crabblesnitch is aware of the hole's existence, but he's still trying to find it. <coughs> now, if we decide to take a look around the hole's arena, we can actually see a crushed elevator, which is weird since there's no elevators anywhere to be seen in the academy. But once again, this is cut content. You see, in the beta, the player would be able to use elevators to gain access to the various school floors, which was cut seemingly very early on, as nobody is ever shown to be down the hole when Jimmy and Gary arrive, but they all do arrive from the elevator way. Also, the player needs to go down here to get a rubber band anyway, so possibly as a way for Rockstar to subliminally show the player this feature, because most players would probably pick up the rubber band and then think, I wonder where this elevator goes. Apparently, this elevator was also going to be used to access the roof too. Now, with all this cut content surrounding the school basement, you'd think, why not just lock it away from the player after the Russell boss fight like they did with everything else? Well, it's not really that simple, because the basement does house a few things needed for 100% completion, such as the pumpkins Jimmy might have missed during Halloween, which you do encounter in the Help Gary mission, but the player is under no obligation to smash them, so you could just return here at any time you want. In the very same room, there's also a transistor for the hobo fighting move tutorials. There's also two rubber bands down here too, and Jimmy can get one during Help Gary, the other band is actually located next to the elevator, which I mentioned earlier, which pretty much everybody will miss during their first playthrough. So they would need to revisit down here at least once after the mission itself. There's also two errands which get unlocked in Chapter 2, where Jimmy needs to run down here for Max and Vance where he needs to fetch some toilet paper for them. So, in conclusion, the school's basement is a very, very unfinished area. It's sad to see really because there's a lot of potential for this, and it's just sad to see it go entirely unused. But hopefully that does shed some light on some of the more weird things that the basement holds. And thank you for watching this episode of Buddy Beta, Buddy Mysteries. I guess it's a bit of both. But yeah, thank you for watching and have a great day.